God, we thank You that although things aren't yet the way we want them to be, we are here with You. God, we ask for Your Holy Spirit to descend upon us in this time of worship. That that same Spirit, the same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead will lift us up. And Lord, we know that that same resurrection power that we celebrate today that brought Jesus out of the tomb is at work in this world. Lord, You are moving. So as we experience You today, as we connect with You, help us to remember, Lord, that Jesus walks throughout this world always present and readily available, always ready to lead us into our next faithful steps. Always there to offer strength and healing and power for our journeys, for this world. And so, God, we lift up this world and those in it ourselves, our families, our friends, our neighbors, yes, even our enemies. That in all these relationships, in all these circumstances which we hold in our heart, Lord, we would see Your resurrection power. So in that hope, we lift up our prayers to You Lord God, hear now the prayers of Your people. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, lift up my mother in law and send healing from our good children. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift up all our prayers to You. Those spoken, those unspoken, those we have a heart for but do not yet have words. We lift them up to You. Trusting in the power of the One who can save us even from death. And with this resurrection hope set firmly in You, we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us enjoy this opportunity for a special piece of music prepared by Mary and Joanne. Again, I invite you 
into a moment of prayer. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of John in the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 19. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from it. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid Him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings laying there, and a cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in the place all by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the Scripture that He must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That was John's Gospel. But in Matthew's Gospel, the tale is told a little differently. Mary arrives at the tomb with another different Mary. And there's an earthquake. And an angel whose appearance, like lightning, just appears and startles them and says, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. He has risen indeed. You all picked up on that. Good job. See, John is not known for his subtlety in this Gospel. But he doesn't have any of that. No earthquake, no angels. Just Mary discovering the tomb open. And then Peter and John finding it empty. That's it. The stone was already rolled away. They go in and nobody's there. You can imagine it. 
a fairly still, serene scene in that tomb placed in the garden. The coolness of the stone walls, the darkness illumined by early morning sunlight barely streaming in through a small doorway. The sounds of chirping birds in a waking world muffled and hollow sounding when within the tomb. It is there, the scripture says, that they saw and believed. But the scripture does not say what they believed exactly. It could have been, yes, they just believed that Jesus' body was indeed gone as Mary had told them. They believed that. Or was this the moment that Jesus' words about his suffering, his death and his resurrection finally sink in? Maybe they not only believed at this moment, but they believed. They believed in what Jesus had done. They believed that sin and death had been defeated on the cross. They believed that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And they believed that He offers resurrection power for our lives. Strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow. Maybe they didn't quite have that all down quite yet. The Scripture does say they didn't quite understand the Scriptures. It said Jesus must rise. And they hadn't quite seen Jesus yet at this point in time. It isn't until everyone leaves the tomb that Jesus appears to anybody. First to Mary, who mistakes Him for the gardener then later to his disciples. In fact, to a number of his disciples if you take the four Gospels into account. You see, they believe when they are in the tomb. But it isn't until they leave it that the good stuff happens. The empty tomb is an amazing sign to us. It was, so it was to Jesus' followers on that Sunday morning millennia ago. It told them that something had happened. But it is not confirmed exactly what, and no disciple really even truly dares to think the most wonderfully unthinkable, unimaginable thing has happened. That not only is that tomb empty, that Jesus' body is gone, but it is empty because Jesus walked out of it alive and on His own two nail-scarred feet. They didn't get to see Him. They didn't get to talk to Him, touch Him, walk with Him until they left that tomb. They believe when they go in the tomb, then they leave the tomb. And then they encounter Jesus. My friends, church, if we want to encounter Jesus, if we want to see Him, know Him, walk with Him, talk with Him, touch Him. We have to do like Jesus and we have to step out of the tomb. And indeed, we have tombs in our lives, don't we? Places of darkness and cold. Where even an, o an open door only lets in a little bit of light. Some sound, some sense of the living world we are called to step into and live in. There are tombs of anxiety and depression. Tombs of anger and hate. Tombs of fear. Tombs of loneliness. Tombs of frustration and exhaustion. There are tombs of our own making carved by our own sin as well. You could say this whole year, our experience of the COVID epidemic, pandemic, has been quite tomb-like itself. Not just because of isolation and separation. Not just because we haven't been in our church building, although we never stopped being church. But simply because of how we have lived in this time. 
how we have experienced this moment in history. How we have responded. Sometimes it's hard to step out of your tomb. Sometimes the anxiety and the fear, loneliness, despair, sometimes the frustration. Sometimes a sin you don't want to let go of. Sometimes it's hard to let go of it, to step out of it and into the light. But Jesus stepped out of His tomb. The thing is, you can believe while you're in your tomb. You can believe. You can believe that Jesus can heal you. You can believe that Jesus will give you the strength you need to reach out to others for help. You can believe that Jesus can lead you to take new steps to lead a new life. You can believe that Jesus can wash away hate and anger and fear and replace it with perfect love like His. You can believe that He forgives you and will make you new. And you are right to believe in every last bit of that. Mary, Peter, and John in that tomb, they believed. But if you want to live like what you believe is true, then you have to take at least a step out of the door of your tomb. Because when you live Like what you believe is true, it's not about what you believe in, it's about who you believe in. And we believe in Jesus Christ and He is risen. risen Amen. He's risen. He is out and about in our lives in this world beckoning us to come follow Him. Like the angel said in Matthew's Gospel, while Jesus' disciples stood at the tomb, He said, He isn't here! You see, dead things go in the tomb. A resurrected living Lord steps out of it. If we are to follow Him, so will we. Jesus isn't in the tomb anymore. He is out there. Again, in the midst of our world and our lives, our homes, our workplaces. In a million different places, a million different people. People and places and situations we are called to go to. Don't you want to encounter Jesus? Don't you want to know Him and love Him more? Hear Him? See Him? Follow Him? Well, He calls us out of our tombs to take a step out as He did on that Sunday morning. The good stuff does not happen until we do. I am looking forward to the good stuff. Aren't you? I've experienced a lot of it. Haven't we not experienced good things here at Mount Zion? Haven't we seen the Gospel lived out? Glimpses into what the Kingdom of God is like as we serve and love others? Have we seen how the love of Jesus can make a difference in a person's life? Haven't we experienced the movement of the Holy Spirit in worship? The movement of the Holy Spirit even in ministry meetings. I'm looking forward to those things. And those things didn't go away. They just pivoted. They just changed. But I sense that a time is here. It's on its way. We will be called to step out of our tombs. Called to step into the light. Called to step to where Jesus is. And we'll see it in Bible study. And in fellowship meals. And in youth group. As we step out and follow our risen Lord. The world is opening up again. You know what, today you might feel like you still stand in the tomb believing. Not quite having stepped out of it, but as the days and the weeks go on, every day Jesus calls you out. 
to step out, to walk again in the world with Jesus, to serve neighbor and friend, to love as Jesus loved, to let the Spirit lead us to be the church, to be a church that lives like Jesus is alive, like Christ is risen. You said it. And it's true. So may we live what we believe and step out of our tomb and every day meet the risen Jesus. Amen. What we are going to be doing next is sharing in our communion prayer. Let's see if I can... I got it to work, Andrew. Ooh. It's just because Andrew stepped near it. <laughs> Same thing happens to Oliver's computer when he's doing an online school. He just needs me to step near it for it to work again. All right. <laughs> we'll be sharing together in our communion prayer in here. And uh, then uh, there will be a postlude. And once uh, that the music is done, we will exit the building and go out to where you will find some chairs. We will maintain social distance. We will wear our masks. And you will also receive uh, um, two things. If you haven't already received them, you should have the lyrics to a song we'll sing together. And you'll receive your communion cups as you walk out the door. And I'll give you instructions on how to use those if you haven't used them before when we're outside. But we'll do the prayer in here. Then... Uh, Mary will play us some music, and then we'll, and Mary and Joanne will play us some music, and then we will go outside. Sounds good? All right. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, here with Your people on earth and the whole company of heaven, we praise Your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of Your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are You and blessed is Your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, God, You have given birth to Your church. You delivered us from our slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water, by the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took bread, gave thanks to You, broke the bread, gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these Your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. God, pour out Your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in this, Your holy church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen.
Amen.